Hi everybody, it's Brian, and early on in our study of Latin America, we mentioned that the South American continent has three dominant physical features, which largely define the landscape and so much of what goes on there. The first two are, of course, the Amazon rainforest and the Andes mountains. Today, we head to the third feature on this list, the southern grasslands. As we step into the southern grasslands, it's pretty obvious how the area gets its name. The landscape overall is vastly different from the dense green forests of the Amazon or the dizzying heights found in the Andes. Keep in mind, however, that these three natural features don't just abruptly end. Rather, there is an overlap, a gradual transition from one to the other which creates special areas in South America. For the grasslands nations, there are five physical characteristics, or subregions, if you will, that need to be mentioned. Those are the Great Rivers region, the Andean region, the tropical lowlands, Patagonia, and the grasslands themselves. The dominant river basin of the grasslands is the Rio de la Plata. Several large interior rivers, including the Paraguay, the Paraná, the Pilcomaya, and the Uruguay, form the Rio de la Plata estuary, which drains into the Atlantic near Buenos Aires, the capital of Argentina. You probably remember that an estuary is where the river meets the tidal coast. The Rio de la Plata is important to the region as it makes it easy to ship goods to and from each country. Also, the rivers are among the only means even today to travel to the interior of the continent. Of course, many of those rivers originate as runoff from the Andes Mountains. While Argentina is included in the grasslands region, let us not forget that Aconcagua and many towering Andean peaks are actually located in Argentina, and the Piedmont region of the Andean foothills is another physical characteristic of the grasslands. Where the grassland meets the Amazon basin is called the tropical lowlands. The land there, called the Gran Chaco, is hot, dry, and sparsely populated. This region includes parts of Paraguay, Argentina, Bolivia, and Brazil. Patagonia is among the most beautiful and desolate places in the world. It is essentially a windswept plateau at the southern end of the grasslands, a dry, cold plain with an abundance of beauty and filled with natural resources such as oil and bauxite. Finally, you have the grasslands themselves, the Pampas. This area, covering nearly a half million square miles, includes all of Uruguay and part of Argentina and Brazil. The Pampas is the breadbasket for Argentina and other nations and produces, through ranching, a great deal of beef and other meat. In addition to Argentina and Uruguay, Paraguay is the third nation found in the southern grasslands region. And though the scenery here is vastly different from their neighbors in the tropical north or the Andean mountains, much of the history of these three nations mirrors their South American brethren. All three nations utilize a republic form of government, allowing citizens to choose leaders, although all three also have a history of military rulers and dictators who abused their power following revolutions to break free from European governance. And that's not all. Like most of South America, all three grassland nations speak mostly Spanish, although Guarani, a native language, is heard in all three as well. Christianity is the most common religious affiliation, and European ancestry is prevalent as the vast majority of the population in each nation is classified as either white or mestizo, much different than that found in, for example, the Andean nations, who you recall have large populations of indigenous peoples. One of the biggest differences is that these three nations are, in general, more economically prosperous than their neighbors to the north. So let's take a closer look at each one to find out why. Uruguay According to the International Monetary Fund, Uruguay's estimated 2021 GDP per capita is 16,772 U.S. dollars, easily the highest in South America. Uruguay can be described as a high-income economy with a stable government, both of which are not always the case in South America. While Venezuela's situation is particularly bleak, no other nation on the continent boasts an economic outlook as bright as Uruguay's. Why is that? 
While the wealth of most South American nations is possessed by a small majority, that is not necessarily so in Uruguay. Rather, Uruguay has a large middle class, many of whom are employed in agricultural industry. The main economic pursuits in Uruguay are related to livestock. Many workers help to raise cattle and other animals, while others process the meat, wool, and leather from the creatures. In fact, 75% of the land in Uruguay is devoted to livestock grazing, while another 10% is set aside for raising grains to feed the animals. Interestingly, Uruguay was also the first nation in the world to fully legalize cannabis in 1974. Such crops and various livestock both prosper in the humid subtropical climate found all across the small nation. Most citizens of Uruguay are of Spanish or Italian descent. There is no official language, but most of the 3.5 million people speak Spanish. About half of that population lives in and around the capital city of Montevideo. One more noteworthy item to mention about Uruguay. Democratic elections were re-established in the country in 1985, and voting is required, not optional. In fact, non-voters must pay a fine. Paraguay like Uruguay, an economy predicated on agriculture can be found in Paraguay. Soybeans and other grains are the leading crops, and livestock creates many jobs. However, the prosperity found in Uruguay is not really the case here. Most Paraguayans live in the eastern highlands, and about half of the 7.4 million residents live in urban areas such as Asuncion, the capital and largest city, which is located on the Paraguay River. Paraguay joins Bolivia as the only two landlocked nations of South America. Waterways are important to this nation, as the Paraguay River connects it to the Rio de la Plata estuary, which empties into the Atlantic, more easily allowing trade with the rest of the world. Another river, the Paraná, is the site of the Itaipu Dam, one of the world's largest hydroelectric projects. The Itaipu Dam, located on the eastern border of Paraguay, stands 643 feet tall and is a joint project with Brazil. Argentina Would it surprise you to know that Argentina is the largest Spanish-speaking country in the world? It's true. At more than 1 million square miles, Argentina is also the second largest nation in South America, behind only Brazil. Argentina has more than 45 million people, meaning it has the third largest population on the continent, behind only Brazil and Colombia. 88% of those people live in urban areas such as Buenos Aires, the capital and largest city. Most Argentinians are of Spanish and Italian ancestry, which explains why Buenos Aires feels much like a European city in terms of art, food, architecture, and fashion. The city's harbor and factories continue to pull people from rural areas for a steady paycheck. Despite a growing economy and one of the largest GDPs in Latin America, Argentina's wealth is unevenly distributed and poverty has grown in the nation. The economic woes are nothing new and have almost certainly been a reflection of the political instability in Argentina. From the 1940s through the early 1980s, several military leaders seized power in Argentina. Among them was Juan Perón, who wanted to distribute wealth more evenly, but whose heavy-handed policies did little to improve the nation's outlook. Others used governmental power to enrich the wealthy. Most censored newspapers, suppressed criticism, and imprisoned opponents. In fact, the 1970s saw many governmental critics being kidnapped and even disappeared by the military. Only after Argentina lost control of the Falkland Islands in a skirmish with Great Britain did the military allow open elections again. The political and economic instability culminated in a collapse of the Argentine currency in 2002. Frequent governmental economic interventions have been needed to keep inflation in check and maintain stability in an often volatile economy. Argentina possesses some of the most abundant natural resources on the planet. Much of the nation's economy revolves around agricultural products such as corn, wheat, soybeans, and livestock. Manufacturing and mining contribute to the nation's economic portfolio, and a growing number of tertiary and quaternary jobs further brightened that outlook. Tourism also fuels the economy of Argentina. 
Buenos Aires, often referred to as the Paris of the West, is the most visited city in South America, and Argentina is second only to Mexico among Latin American nations for the number of visitors each year. High on the list for most tourists is Mount Aconcagua, the tallest peak in the Americas at 22,837 feet tall, or Iguazu Falls, located on the Brazilian border and the largest waterfall in the world. Wow! Conclusion Like most other South American nations, those of European descent control a majority of the wealth and economic power in the grassland nations. Movements away from military rule have helped to stabilize political and economic systems, but wealth redistribution among the people is ongoing. Until next time, keep exploring! Hey!